أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to today's video blog Well before I begin I would like to ask the elders in the audience if I can speak and I would like to ask my brother Detroit Red permission to give reply uh, Let's see The message just came in It says Get in it bro Speak up on this, please. And that I will, my brother. See, I'm getting myself together. I'm going to Juma. But I couldn't wait to get up in this. This subject is one that is very serious. Continue your education by watching this video. Islam versus blackness. There's this sort of dichotomy that's going on. The world wants the black man to stay away from the identity of being black. Well, brothers and sisters, let me tell you how it's been for me being born Muslim and being raised in the United States. Boy, do I have a story for you. Two names. My brothers, come back. It's Naji Allah, Abdul Mutta Kabir, and Ridwan. Brothers, if y'all are out there, come back to the Islam, man. I miss y'all brothers. And there's numerous, numerous more brothers that I know that I want to come back home. Brother, I apologize for the time that you went to the masjid and that brother didn't really treat you with, res with respect, brother. I apologize. I apologize for the brother that tried to, you know, take you for the tabliki jamaat, which caused problems with your wife because she was asking you why you didn't work. I apologize for that. I didn't get a chance to warn you about some of these things that we have in Islam. Uh, you know, they, they're not right, you know. See, it's not Islam. It's the way that these people inject these things and concepts in Islam. Islam is pure. But it's when you look at what has been injected. There's many brothers that I haven't seen for many years. Those are just two brothers of numerous amounts of brothers that have came in and adopted a concept in their mind that they must say Ya'ani or other things. They slowly started adapting some cultural elements that was not of their own. And when they did that, it caused confusion because they went back home and then they were reminded that were, they were black men. But in the masjid, they were like, oh, brother, how are you? Yani, yeah. You know, they started playing into this rhythm that wasn't their own rhythm. It's easy to colonize the African-American because we don't know our culture and we've been colonized before. This is the structure and the identity that we struggle in in this country, being African-American. Now, this may look as a negative thing, but in our case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it a positive. And let me explain to you how. Why is Malcolm X a leader who was loved around the world, brothers and sisters? Very simple. Malcolm X was a leader not because he had ilm, he could read all of the Quran, yet he did have ilm. Ilm of one element. This ilm is taqwa. See, al Haj Malik Shabazz is someone I call the Imam of Taqwa, the Imam of fear of Allah. He did not fear any governmental agency, FBI, CIA, or the Nation of Islam. al Haj Malik Shabazz feared Allah, truly. When we have Imams overseas right now who don't fear Allah solely, therefore they Look up to Al Haj Malik Sabaz, better known as Malcolm X. Now take the name of our leader, Al Haj Malik Sabaz. May Allah rest his soul. Well, he's remembered as Malcolm X. He's not remembered at the name as the name that he picked after converting or taking true shahada and coming back as a re reinforced leader with a message of tawheed. Very simple, okay? You need to work with me. John Muhammad, Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam. Put it together. That's what you know as a black Muslim. That's what you know. And so the stigma has been forced or is being forced down many people in the audience's throat as to what a black Muslim is. When it's very simple. Someone who is a black man in the United States and is also Muslim. But yet the connotation is negative. Ask yourself why. John Muhammad was a sniper in the back of a car shooting people. He was a black Muslim. Really? Farrakhan, he's the nation, leader of the Nation of Islam. He was a black Muslim. 
Really? All the members of the Nation of Islam, they're black Muslims. Really? Now, I've been Muslim all my life. <laughs> and a Muslim means someone who submits wholeheartedly to the will of Allah. That's a Muslim. Someone who submits themselves wholeheartedly to Islam. So are all those people I mentioned really Muslim? That's something for you to think about. Looking at the current status quo in the Islamic community, it's a wretched thing. We got brothers and sisters who are abusing their wives. They're coming from, the overseas, coming from overseas and abusing their wives here in the United States. They bring in certain elements of the culture, good and bad, in the United States. This is not right. This is not right. Now, Malcolm X Street, the sign has been knocked down by some local brothers for some reason. I don't know why it has been put up. Elijah Muhammad Boulevard has temple number one, but on every single corner, there's a liquor store owned by a Muslim. That's the contribution that that Middle Eastern brother has given to Detroit. A stock for the law, a stock for the law. Brother, this is not a hate message. This is a message of truth. This is where I was raised. This is what I know to be true. We've been waiting for contributions from brothers and sisters who were willing to organize within the Detroit community to mobilize brothers and sisters for unity under La ilaha illallah, but yet in Detroit, our communities are separating, segregated, as you would see a black and white community, a stock for the law. Some of the experiences I had with the question of why are you a black Muslim, my username is Black Plight for You. Someone asked me, brother, are, I notice you have some Farrakhan messages as your favorites. Are you Nation of Islam? No, I'm not Nation of Islam. Do you believe that the mothership is coming down and uh, it's going to free you and your people? No, I don't believe in that. Do you believe that uh, all white people are devils? No, I really don't believe in that. So that means that you must like the founding fathers of the United States and all of the other representatives of the United States Congress. Now that's where you made a mistake. <laughs> I'm an African American, there's no way in the world. I, do, I believe in what's called it's so freedom. Institutionized, selective, systematic oppression. That's the type of freedom that I have experienced. It's in the institutions. It's selective. It's systemized. And that it picks one or two people, this or that brother, this or that sister. And then it continues to oppress over and over and over again. That's what goes on in the United States. It's institutional racism. Brother, I don't know what you mean. Explain it. Well... If you didn't know, brothers and sisters, I'm going to give you some personal information. My social security number, the first three numbers of my social security number is 385. That means that in the state, in the city, that's the numbers that were given to me. Everyone in the area has a basic number of 385 if you're from the Detroit or so area, born in that area. Guess what? It's the same for every single 50 states in the United States. They have the first three digits signify your number and city. The other goes into more detail, but it gets deeper. 